Good evening everybody, my name's Dean Amos, I'm the owner of Sugar Ray's Vintage Recording Studio here in Wickford in Essex and uh, I've had a lot of people recently asking about the studio, what equipment we use, how the live room looks, what we use in the live room, so I thought I'd take you on a small tour of the studio so that uh, you can get an insight what we're doing here at the studio in our recording process. So let's go. Right. So coming from the control room, walking into the live room, this is a live room, 33 feet by 18 feet uh, in size. Didn't plan this to be the same roughly size as Sun, Studi Sun Studios, but it's turned out that way. Um, if you look at the ceiling here, we've got a lot of um, acoustic treatment going on. I've got um, polycylindrical um, diffusers up in there and also absorbers. Um, got the diffusers again on the walls. Um, these were very similar to what they were using at Studio B. There's Elvis there in the studio where you can see the wall ones are similar. Um, this deflects the sound and absorbs the sound, keeps the room bright but not dead. You don't want dead sound in uh, environments for um, valve tube recording. The microphones, the equipment was all designed in the day to work in this type of environment. This is a pegboard I bought over from America. Uh, six mil board which is studio quality it's the thicker stuff with the four mil holes um, gives a great ambient live sound um, what we've also got is um, acoustic screens extensively we use um, these I had scaled and made from the originals of uh, RCA which they were using this one is a typical vocal one of course with the glass so that the singer can see the rest of the band We've got a lot of small ones here, they're all on casters with the handles on so that you can move them around. Of course that was uh, very important to get mic placement, you're always constantly adjusting the room. So this is what we've got for that purpose. Uh, there's one behind the drums there, we use in front of the drums normally. Uh, going on to the, uh, uh, to the uh, instrumentation we have in the studio, uh, this is an Ingle Heart which is part of the K family, double bass, um, swing master top of the range I bought over from Chicago, 1956 Premier drum kit, guitar, not a good guitar but it's uh, we've got it here, um, over here in the corner a little device I've got, or a little um, accessory I should say for guitar which is a Premier, which is part of the early Fender situation over there, um, this is uh, actually a reverb system for guitar, this all works. There's Eddie Cochran there. Right, moving through, looking over this way. Piano Baby Grand, sounds absolutely fantastic when it's recorded. 1943. These stands here we use, these are the Atlas stands on wheels again. Everything's got to be movable. These, these are the Atlas made in New Jersey. Um, we even got a recording prompt light there that comes on. Um, this is um, uh, the uh, control room glass which we had laser level, uh, laser checked so that it just uh, on the right angle so it hits the floor just before the back wall which is what you want from displacement of sound. Hank Williams there. Walking into the control room, this is the engine room of the whole thing. There's your view out there into the live room which a lot of people have seen already in videos. Right, <coughs> Ampex. This is our iconic 1950s, mid 50s, early 50s uh, 350, which um, uh, which is the same model as what Sam Phillips used at Sun. This is in full working condition. We use this for recording quite a lot. Next door we've got Collins 212E, which is a five channel mono desk. Can be made into stereo, at the moment it's in mono. Um, a lovely desk. Then above that, I've got a custom made uh, copycat dual system for variable slapback echo, tape echo, late 50s, all tube again. Then here, this is the desk I had made up over in the UK. I bought all the components from America. This is the copy of the famous 1958 desk that Norman Petty used at uh, Clovis, New Mexico to record all the Buddy Holly stuff. Um, this has got the same as his three 1567A Altec mixers with um, 
Altec compressors, 436Cs, and Pultec um, EQs. Um, there's a blue front one there. LA2A compressor as well. Um, there's a Mastering um, Portec silver front. That's the summing mixer we use for summing up all the signals into the uh, tape recorder. Tape recorder wise, another one here, 300 Ampex, which uh, is a mono single track recorder, quarter inch. Next door is Ricky Braun's actually recorder, which is Ampex, very rare machine. It's a three track, half inch machine. Unfortunately, it needs a lot of work doing to that one, but uh, a, a, a brilliant machine. Then uh, this here, a lot of people ask me what you've got that modern device in there. Well, that's just powering our monitor speakers. That is not in the recording chain at all. Over here, 1948 Ampex CBS Studios it came from. There's the number 28. They were all numbered. This took me almost a year to have this completely refurbished. Bringing loads of parts over from America, etc. And uh, this is in full working order. This was used just recently on a recording project. Over there, we've got Altec playback speakers. Had the uh, all the um, the cabinets made up over here to the original spec. Tweed fronts on them, of course. Had that all made up over here. Walking into the green room, this is all hand picked furniture I picked myself. This is all genuine 1950s furniture, no reproduction furniture in here at all. Um, looking around here, bespoke built bar. This was a one-off built for a client. I bought that off, um, off the family. That's um, a one-off made bar, lovely bar as you can see. Um, lovely sideboard I bought there. Lurking in the corner here we've got an EMT reverberation plate. An iconic piece of equipment, this one particularly because it's first year of manufacture, 1957. And as you can see, serial number 79. This is in full working condition. Had this one serviced fairly recently. Weigh an absolute ton. You need four people to lift them. Um, and uh, But they absolutely give an incredible sound. A variable reverberation. You've got the variable dial on the top there. These were used extensively in America in the 1950s, particularly at RCA. They had a number of them at RCA and uh, they just sound incredibly good. So that's the uh, green room as it were. The record player there. All works. One goes. So there we have it. A lot of people ask me about um, the microphones. The microphones really are designed to work with all this equipment. A lot of people have said, oh yeah, but you can use them in modern studios. Well, you can, there's no problem with that. But they weren't designed for that originally. They were designed to work in this type of environment, in that type of live room. And from that, you'll get the best from them. Because in the day, this equipment was all designed and built by the technicians to work together. And this is everything together in one place. So thanks for, look, for watching and thanks for listening.